This is Motorola's new budget 5G mid-ranger, the Moto G53. Besides 5G connectivity, what else does this phone have to offer? I'm Will for GSM Marina, and let's find out in our full review. The Moto G53 is a budget-friendly mid-ranger that is a big departure from last year's Moto G52. The major upgrades here include 5G connectivity and a faster refresh rate on the display. But unfortunately, to make those upgrades happen and keep the price down, there had to be some downgrades elsewhere. I'll get to those in a bit. The Moto G53 is made of plastic, and the design is overall pretty minimalistic. The flat back has a subdued, frosted finish. The frame is flat too, but has a chamfered edge. There is no official ingress protection here, but Motorola claims the design is water repellent. On the front is a 6.5 inch IPS LCD with a 720p resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. The 120Hz is the upgrade here, up from 90Hz last year. It's smooth, and the display can dial down based on what's happening on screen to a minimum of 60Hz to save energy. But besides the refresh rate, this 720p LCD is a notable downgrade from the 1080p AMOLED in the previous model. The picture isn't as sharp and not as contrasty either. At least colors can be decently accurate if you tweak them in settings. For brightness, we measured a maximum of 490 nits with a manual slider, and this boosts up to 600 nits in auto mode. It's alright, but nothing impressive. For audio, there is a standard headphone jack and stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos support. The speakers are pretty loud, and the sound quality is okay. There's a side-mounted fingerprint reader for biometrics built into the power button. And you can get the phone with 64 or 128 gigs of storage, and that is expandable through microSD. The software experience of the Moto G53 is pretty much what you'd get on other Motorola phones. It's a very clean and near-stock Android 13, with a few custom Moto features on top. These are all conveniently organized within the Moto app, and include personalization options, gesture shortcuts, and the peak display function. The whole point of the Moto G53 is the 5G connectivity, and that's provided by its 5G-capable chipset. It's a Snapdragon 480+, Plus. but besides being 5G-capable, the performance is nothing to write home about. In benchmarks, the Moto G53 sits pretty low on the charts compared to most other mid-rangers. At least in graphics tests, the Moto G53 has an advantage over similarly equipped devices because of its less demanding 720p display. The G53 does a decent job for your day-to-day -day use and some casual gaming, but many competitors do offer both 5G connectivity and more raw power for a similar price. Battery life, though, is no concern here. There's a large 5,000 mAh battery, and the phone scored an excellent endurance rating of 123 hours in our tests. But for some reason, this year there's only support for basic 10-watt charging. That's compared to 30 watts in last year's model. With that 10 watt adapter, we were only able to charge the G53 from 0 to 22% in half an hour. A full charge takes over two and a half hours. The camera setup is yet another area in which we see a downgrade compared to the Moto G52. There's no ultra-wide cam this time around. The G53 has just a 50 megapixel main cam and a 2 megapixel macro camera. The main cam captures 12.5 megapixel photos by default due to pixel binning. They have plenty of detail, good contrast and dynamic range, and true-to-life colors. Look closer though and you do see some softness and graininess. The main camera can also capture decent portraits, with pretty good edge detection. The macro camera's 2 megapixel close-ups are okay, with a decent level of detail considering the resolution and nice colors. In low light conditions, the Moto G53 struggles a bit. The main cam's photos have some detail, and light sources are handled decently well, but overall the shots are soft and grainy, and also quite dark. The Moto G53 has an automatic night mode which can kick in, or you can toggle a manual night mode. It removes noise, but also smooths out the details. The 8 megapixel selfie camera does a decent job for the price. There's enough detail, and colors look nice. Video capture on the G53 is limited to 1080p at 30fps. The main cam captures a decent amount of detail for this resolution, and the colors are well saturated. The contrast is way too high though, and the dynamic range is limited. 
There is electronic stabilization, and it works pretty well to smooth out bumps and shakes, but introduces some focus hunting. So that's the Moto G53. We do like the great battery life, the stereo speakers, the 120Hz refresh rate, and the clean software experience. However, compared to the previous model, there are plenty of downgrades, and it seems like Motorola sacrificed a bit too much in order to include 5G connectivity in the budget. Right now, there are plenty of other phones on the market that can offer a lot more bang for your buck than the Moto G53. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're looking for some alternatives to the Moto G53, one option could be last year's Moto G82. Or you could have a look at Samsung's Galaxy A33. Let us know what you guys think, and I'll see you on the next one.